Judo is a dynamic, high-intensity intermittent sport that requires complex skills and tactical excellence for success. As Judo athletes have to perform a great number of actions during each match, the physical demand of a single match is high. Typically, the medalists perform five to seven matches during international competitions, with each match having a five-minute time limit. If an athlete obtains an Ippon, full point, the match ends. Somatotype and body composition. In judo, as occurs in any other combat sport, where competitors are divided by weight classes, optimal body composition is a major concern. Thus, the athletes attempt to maximize the amount of lean tissue, minimize the amount of body fat, and minimize total body weight. Considering the broad range of weight classes, it is impossible to establish a single body type or anthropometric profile for all athletes. Nevertheless, there is some similarity throughout much of the range in terms of characteristic somatotypes and a predominance of mesomorphy. In terms of somatotype, the athlete is generally thought to have a profile that accentuates the mesomorphic properties. Among females, the endomorphic component has values near to the mesomorphic one. However, caution should be exercised when interpreting these results as they could have been influenced by the inclusion of heavyweight athletes. The table 2 presents the body composition of high-level athletes. World and Olympic level male athletes usually have less than 10% body fat. However, caution is needed when using this value as a reference, because most studies predicted body fat by skinfold thickness measurements and, therefore, the specific mean error of estimate of each equation should be taken into consideration. Ideally, a prospective athlete should employ sound nutrition and aerobic training principles to reach a steady state fat percentage of 7 to 10 percent. Since they compete at their weight categories, it is not surprising that they are very strong per kilogram of body weight. This means that they must have a very small percentage of body fat compared with an average male of the same height and age. Maximal strength. Maximal strength can be defined as the maximal torque that a muscle or a muscle group can generate at a specified or determined velocity. It depends upon the ability of the nervous system to recruit motor units, the ability of the muscle to utilize the energy anaerobically for muscle contractions, the amount of motor units simultaneously active and the size of cross-sectional area of muscle fibers present. Because of the relationship to cross-sectional area and size, strength is often analyzed relatively to body weight. The so-called relative strength is especially informative in bodyweight classified sports. Isometric strength. An isometric action results in no change in muscle length and although force is developed, as no movement occurs, no work is performed. As judo athletes have to grip the opponent's uniform, early studies have focused on isometric grip strength. The table presents the grip strength of different groups of athletes. Sex differences were reported in only one study. The male group presented higher absolute right and left isometric grip strength compared with the female group. However, when values were presented relative to body mass, no difference was observed. In Canadian judo players, no statistical comparison between male and female athletes was reported, but it is possible to infer that both absolute and relative isometric grip strength were higher for the male group. Thus, it can be hypothesized that high-level male and female athletes differ less in isometric grip strength when compared with lower-level male and female athletes, probably because high-intensity training can decrease the difference in relative strength. Differences in isometric grip strength were reported between cadet athletes and both junior and senior athletes. However, when an index of isometric strength was expressed relative to body mass, only cadet and senior athletes differed. Furthermore, an important aspect for consideration is the fact that no difference was observed between elite and non-elite players and most of the groups on table would be classified only as good compared with the US population, thus, it is likely that measurement of isometric strength endurance may be more relevant to athletes' evaluation than the measurement of maximal strength, since the athletes have a near-continuous grip during a match and the maximal strength is not maintained for a long period. However, no studies were found concerning isometric grip strength endurance in athletes. Dynamic Strength the one repetition maximum test has been used for both evaluating and pre prescribing strength training. 
However, the data are limited in the literature. The table presents the results found in athletes from different levels and for different exercises. In one study, maximal absolute and relative squat strength differed between recreational and international level athletes, while no differences were found among groups for the bench press exercise. However, when athletes of similar competitive level were compared no differences were reported for bench press, row, and squat values. It is important to highlight that the bench press values presented in the table are in the 60-80th percentile of the US population, which suggests that these athletes do not present an excellent maximal strength profile. Studies on female athletes' maximal strength are scarcer but one study has reported values lower than their male counterparts and comparable to those verified in non-athletes. Some studies presented values of strength on specific machines, which can provide a more realistic perspective and a more specific and performance-related evaluation. The table presents the results of strength tests conducted on isokinetic equipment in athletes. When athletes from different age classes are compared, both knee and shoulder flexion and extension strength were higher in seniors compared with juniors. Only one study presented a statistical comparison between male and female athletes. The results showed a similar trend to that observed in non-athletes, that is the male athletes presented a higher absolute strength. This difference decreased when the value was relative to the fat-free mass. Both men and women were stronger in their knee extensor than in their knee flexor muscles. Women were also stronger in their elbow extensor than in their elbow flexor muscles. However, men attained almost the same value for both elbow muscle groups. Other studies with male athletes reported similar values of extensor flexor ratio for shoulder and knee. Trunk flexion corresponded to 71 to 81% of the extension value, despite the fact that right-handed performer left trunk rotation in many techniques, no difference was observed in the dynamic strength between sides, suggesting that rotation dominance seems to be determined more by coordination than by strength. A comparison among weight categories using isokinetic equipment was not found in the literature. The available information on this aspect indicates that in absolute values heavier athletes are stronger than lighter ath athletes. The half heavyweight category were considered the weakest among the seven weight classes, however, there is no clear explanation for this finding. Muscle power. Muscle power has been characterized in athletes through the use of free weight exercises or vertical jump tests. A study conducted with Finnish athletes demonstrated that international level athletes presented higher values in the strength velocity curve for the squat jump compared with a group of recreational practitioners. The time to achieve half of the maximum strength was shorter for the international level group. Given that the muscle groups mainly activated during a throwing technique are those of the lower body, and considering that these techniques have to be performed at high speed and against a great resistance from the opponent, this difference can be a consequence of this adaptation. However, when the bench press exercise was used to determine the strength velocity curve, no difference was found in international, national or recreational level groups. This may be due to the multiple actions performed by the upper body during a typical match. The table presents the vertical jump test results in athletes. One of the first studies of power characteristics of athletes used the vertical jump test to compare different age groups. It demonstrated a significant decrease after the athletes reached 50 years of age. Another study compared junior and senior players and found a higher performance in the vertical jump test in seniors compared with juniors. Only one study presenting results from male and female athletes was found, but no comparison between groups was made. Muscular endurance. Muscular endurance is the ability of a muscle or group of muscles to sustain repeated contractions against, against a resistance for an extended period of time. In judo, most of the studies on muscular endurance have evaluated this capacity using sit-ups and push-ups, the results from these studies are presented in the table. Based on the results depicted above, it is possible to conclude that athletes are, in general, above the 90th percentile for push-ups, and between the 80th and 90th percentile for sit-ups in classificatory tables. This can be interpreted as a high need for muscular endurance in these muscle groups for a successful performance. Anaerobic profile. 
During her match, the anaerobic contribution seems to be very important, although other sources also contribute significantly to the total work performed. The anaerobic evaluation is quite complex because no gold standard test is available, however, as is seen in other sports, the Wingate test has been used to evaluate the anaerobic profile. The typical Wingate test evaluates variables, peak power, mean power, and fatigue index, that have been reported for upper and lower body actions. In athletes from sports in which upper body actions are important, such as wrestling and judo, the upper body Wingate test has been used more often than the lower body test. The table, presents the main results of studies evaluating players' anaerobic performance. The values presented by the athletes from a range of different national teams were quite high and their performance during the upper body wing gate test was above the 90th percentile for lower body values measured in non-athletes. This result has been interpreted as a consequence of the high upper body demand during judo-specific activities performed in the training sessions. A comparison among age groups using, using the upper body wing gate test has shown that cadet athletes have lower absolute peak and mean power when compared with both junior and senior athletes, and lower relative peak power compared with senior athletes. Performance of judo athletes in lower body wing gate tests has also been investigated. The table presents the main published results. When different competitive level groups are compared for performance, the pattern largely differs from that observed in the upper body Wingate test. This probably occurs due to the low demand imposed on the lower body in judo. However, it is possible to verify differences between weight categories and to confirm the inferences raised in the upper body test concerning the lower relative results presented by heavyweight categories compared with lighter categories in both males and females. Other studies have assessed judo athletes in a variety of anaerobic tests. Some have used cycle ergometer tests, jumps are tests involving a running time trial. Based on these studies it can be concluded that judo athletes of both sexes show great power and anaerobic capacity when exercise involves the upper body, and this aspect is a potential discriminating factor in performance. Moreover, power and anaerobic capacity values from the lower body are not prominently higher than that observed in other athletic groups or even in active individuals. Additionally, these variables do not appear to be predictors of performance and success. Aerobic profile. Although decisive actions in judo are main, mainly dependent on anaerobic metabolism, aerobic fitness seems to be important in high-intensity intermittent exercise, which is the case with judo, as it permits better recovery during the short rest periods between efforts. The aerobic fitness of the players has been assessed essentially via maximal oxygen uptake, VO2 max, or peak oxygen uptake, VO2 peak for the aerobic power component and via the so-called anaerobic threshold for the aerobic capacity component. Both aerobic power and capacity have been considered relevant to judo performance because it has been hypothesized that a higher value for these variables should allow athletes to maintain a higher intensity during the match, delay the accumulation of metabolites associated with fatigue processes and improve the recovery process between two consecutive matches. In fact, there is some evidence that athletes who normally obtain their scores in the final and were able to resynthesize gastrocnemius creatine phosphate faster compared with others who score earlier in the match and had better per moments of a match present higher V.O2 max values. Furthermore, a faster recovery after high intensity intermittent exercise has also been associated with aerobic fitness. Athletes with higher aerobic power are probably able to perform supramaximal activities at a relatively lower intensity compared with those with lower aerobic power. This would be even more important considering the matches that last several minutes and probably explains the importance of aerobic power for judo performance. The table presents the aerobic power of male and female judo players. Regarding the influence of aerobic power on performance, it is important to consider that the studies comparing elite versus non-elite male athletes, principals versus reserves in national teams or athletes involved in direct comp competition, did not observe any significant difference between these groups. Thus, although aerobic power can be relevant to judo performance, its development is not enough to discriminate the competitive level of judo athletes. 
Aerobic capacity in judo players has been evaluated through the so-called anaerobic threshold velocity. The table presents it of judo athletes. As shown in table, judo athletes of different levels have similar anaerobic threshold velocity, which is not as high as in aerobically trained athletes. Additionally, it did not change in the final phase of competitive preparation in highly trained female judo players. Thus, based on these observations, in the evaluation process of judo athletes, other aspects should be focused on. Ventilatory threshold has also been used to evaluate the aerobic capacity of judo players. The main results are presented in table. The percentage of VO2 max, percent V.O2 max, in which the ventilatory threshold identified was similar to those found in physically active individuals, but lower than in highly aerobically trained athletes. This fact strengthens the belief and provides more evidence that aerobic metabolism is not highly developed in high-level judo athletes. Additionally, the only study comparing different age groups did not find any difference for ventilatory threshold. When males and females are compared, the results seem to indicate higher values in males, although no detail about this aspect was given in these studies.